Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. And here we are again with Writer Ministries Bible School with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. And we're on our third hour, and we're all excited because this is the teaching where the Holy Spirit teaches us that He is his, the teacher. Amen. Amen. So let's open up with prayer and let's put a demand upon the Spirit of God to be our teacher. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this awesome outpouring of the Holy Spirit with Writer Ministries Bible School. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to come along and give us revelation knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. And all the people of God said, yes and amen, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We want to remind us that our text for this teaching is 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14, which says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to be having an awesome time on, on learning how the Holy Spirit teaches us. Amen. So understanding the Holy Spirit as the teacher. If we're not taught by the Holy Spirit, we can be tainted or slanted by man's view. You can say, well, this is not what I believe. This is what our, teach, our church teaches us. This is what we do. And the answer to that is, but this is what the Holy Spirit has taught me. And the man that says that's being taught by the Holy Spirit has more of an understanding of the Scriptures and more revelation. It's interesting to know, and, and I'm not disagreeing, but I'm just bringing this up because the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me. You go to the churches and you talk to your pastors and... And they always say to you, well, what does the context of the text say? So in other words, from one paragraph to the next paragraph. And that way you get a full, full understanding of the scripture. Because you can take a scripture and turn it all around and get it mixed up. That's the objective here. So what is he really trying to tell us in this text? And the Holy Spirit never comes and gives you the whole context. He gives you a word. He gives you a scripture. He reminds you and it bubbles up and, you, and the Holy Spirit isn't giving you a context, but it is how he says it to you of the scripture, of a word or whatever, changes your entire life. And I, and I, and I just chuckle over that because why? If you don't read the whole context, you're not going to get it. But you can get it. It's called by revelation knowledge. Amen? In 1 John chapter 1, we want to go back over there again, and we're going to see hey, if these guys got it, we need to get it too. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And the scripture tells us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship or communion, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? So John was interested in that the church would fellowship with God and with Jesus. And like I said earlier before we started this video, it's like a lot of people think fellowship means let's go eat dinner. That's not what he's talking about. But a lot of times people like to bring people over to relax them, sit down, feed them, so then they can share. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to eat. A lot of people fast. And you can still have fellowship. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, in 1 John chapter 2, I've got a few scriptures here I want to read to us. Verse 20, and it says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. How many here say you're a know-it-all? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, knowing all things is different than having been taught all things. So it's important. Having an unction from the Holy Spirit. And I like to look at that word as unction as... A little push, a little move, a little knowing that you're being led. Just a little put in the right direction, a little anointing, a little unction from the Holy Spirit, a little prick, a little letting, a little pulling. It's something to get your attention. Because he's a leader. 
And you know, a good leader can look at you with just his eyes and you know exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And you have, you have an unction from the Holy Spirit and you know all things. Isn't that awesome? Then in the same chapter, verse 26 and verse 27, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Now a lot of people say, well, there you go. I don't need to go to church. Just, I don't need no man to teach me. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit teach me. And they can go right off the wayside. So we're going to talk to you about what does that mean that you need not that any man teach you. All right, before we go there, let me read what I've written. The word seduction in verse 26. I've written unto thee concerning them that seduce you. Seduction means trapped by people and led astray. I have written unto you concerning them that are trapping you and leading you astray. Hmm. The word anointing means the Holy Spirit. But the anointing which you have received, you got to stop and think, now Holy Spirit, which you have received, abides in you. So if you see it like that, look at it a little bit different. The Holy Spirit is the only guarantee that you're not being seduced. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you have this anointing, a Holy Spirit inside you. All right? He is the only authorized teacher. Say amen. Amen. Because when you stop and think about this, if he doesn't teach you, how are you going to be taught? And 99 and 9 tenths of people say, well, I don't need somebody to teach me, so I'll just, I, just, I don't have to go anywhere. All right? Well, you're, I bet that same person doesn't pray, doesn't listen, doesn't read the Word of God, doesn't follow through, and so he's not going to be taught of the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, how can that happen? The answer to that is, God approves your pastor to teach you of the Word uh, the Holy Spirit is taught him to tell you, and you need to hear the word coming from which brings faith. So, there are some preachers that will preach, let me just say, 1,500 words, and out of those words, one of those words helped you. That was the anointing. That was the Holy Spirit taking something that's inside that and giving you the answer. So, he does use people, but it's the Holy Spirit. So, you've got to say to yourself, is that Robert teaching me, or is that the Holy Spirit teaching me? See, and if you stop and remember what the Bible says, it's not I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me. And you have the same thing. So, instead of looking at the person and maybe he has a little quirk, or maybe he does this, maybe he looks funny sometimes, and you can get into the flesh by looking at that, rather than listening with your heart, Okay, Holy Spirit, what are you showing me today? What are you teaching me today? I've heard that scripture a hundred times. Instead of saying that, Lord, I want to get the revelation out of it this time. See the difference in how you come in? And then you say, okay, Holy Spirit, I know you're going to, I'm going to church this morning, Lord. I know I'm going to hear something. That you're going to teach me something. I'm going to receive something. I'm going there for you. And I want to come out of there on fire for the things of God. So when you hear the man of God, man, every word he spoke was just for me. That's because you heard the Spirit of God talk to you. And that's what it's talking about. See, it's not that man's teaching you. It's that the Holy Spirit is teaching you, though he's using a person. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So he's the only authorized teacher. So you've got to get this in your heart. How does the Holy Spirit teach me? And what do I do with his teaching? Am I going to operate with it or am I just going to sit on it? And God wants us to operate with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's go over to the big John, chapter 14, the Gospel of John, and get some more good si insights here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. John, chapter 14, let's go over to verse 26. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So, 
in this particular scripture, you're seeing that the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He has already said, He shall teach you all things. Amen. And He testifies or as a witness of us for Jesus. Amen. Chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when He, the Holy Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen. So he testifies of Jesus. He will lead you into all truth. There is no tainting in that whatsoever. It will be the truth. He will guide you. And he never talks about himself. He always talks to you about Jesus. He always shows you what's going to happen because he's going to show you things to come. Say amen. amen. And so people don't realize you can ask the Holy Spirit because he's God. He'll help you. He'll guide you. And he always gives you the truth. Say praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. You can see that he is the what? The authorized teacher. Amen. amen. Now we want to go over to 1 Corinthians in chapter 2 is very powerful. Thank you, Lord. Verse 12. And the scripture says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, which is the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And if you look up the word things, it's actually thoughts, that we might know the thoughts that are freely given to us of God. We're going to know God's thinking. How he operates. Amen. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, Holy Ghost teaching you, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So the Holy Spirit is going to teach us. Amen. He, we are taught in our spirit by the Holy Spirit. Now Paul was taught by revelation. Amen. He got revelation knowledge, and he got that by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth. So we have not received the Spirit of the world, but of the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the thoughts that are freely given to us, which things we also speak, not the way that man has taught me, but by the way the Holy Spirit has taught me, comparing, here I'll get the word, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Holy Spirit is going to take the spiritual things, and he's going to compare those things to us, which are spiritual. So comparing spiritual with spiritual. We are spiritual. He compares a real thing in spiritual and he shows it to us and we have a comparison. We identify with what he's teaching. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, we're almost there. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Say amen. A non-born again person cannot receive or teach the things of God. They can only teach bondage. A natural man means, the natural means carnal. And this is where I like to have fun with this scripture. The natural man receiveth not of the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish and neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. This is why I call it members only. You've got to be born again to get the Holy Ghost, which is members. You've got to be born again. Otherwise, because did you hear what I just said? I'm going to bring it up to you again. A non-born again person cannot receive or teach the things of God. So why do you go out there on the street corner trying to get people saved and give them ins insights about what's going on at the church and what's happening and the Holy Spirit's moving and you're giving him scriptures because he's not going to understand. He doesn't understand because it's it's way over his head. He has no idea until he gets born again. Then he understands. So how many times have you led somebody to the Lord and they act like, just like they didn't get born again? They have no understanding. So we have to give them discipling. Discipline. Show them. Teach them. Help them out. Let the Spirit of God teach them. Now if you're not Spirit-filled praying in tongues, it's a little bit harder to get Spirit-filled, isn't it? And have the Holy Ghost teach you. Didn't say you couldn't. I said it's a little bit harder. 
and you stop and think about it. Now, how, the, how did you learn all the things about the Lord? You went to church. Someone taught you. Someone read the scripture, which was the word of God, and the Holy Spirit used that. But if you didn't go to church, you didn't hear the word of God, you wouldn't be trained. You wouldn't be taught. You'd have a difficult time. So it's important to have an understanding of how the Holy Spirit works. I'm here getting this. Yeah. All right. So do you realize a person, there are a lot of people that preach the gospel that are not born again. Lots of people preach the gospel that are not born again. And yet they'll put you into bondage. They'll teach you bondage. They'll, they'll, they'll take their scripture and get in trouble. And then you think that's the gospel truth because he taught you, not the Spirit of God taught you. Are you following where I'm going with this? So it's important that we know that he is our teacher. Amen. In the Colossians chapter 2, to the right a little bit. <clears throat> Praise God. In Colossians chapter 2, in verse 6, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's amazing. Man's, man's religion, man's philosophy can ruin you. Colossians 2, verse 6. As you, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Amen. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And this is the hang-up. A lot of people go to church, and next thing you know, they're taken astray. So you understand how man's philosophies can spoil you. You go to a place, I've been to places before, and, they, and then fire, hail, and brimstone coming out of there. There's nothing in the Bible that says they're going to do that. Once you're born again, a lot, they use the fear tactics, and they get you spoiled. They make you, th make you afraid of certain things. And this is how our church does it. This is what you have to do. This is blah, blah, blah. This is our doctrine. And you're going to get into places that do that. And, and you say, well, you can't come to our church and have communion because you're not a member here. Where does it say to do that? They're, they're changing, and you'll get... Hey, I want the communion because I know that God will do something for me. He'll forgive me. He'll set me free. I mean, I'll tell you what. If you're a sinner, where do you go? you got to go to the what? Church. And church is the place where sinners ought to be so they can be what? Forgiven. you got to go to the blood, not run from it. And yet, it won't let you take it. Hmm, something wrong with that picture. How many you know what I'm talking about? No, one, no one's ever been there? I've been there. Okay, go to a Catholic church. See if you can have communion. Well, you're not a Catholic. Well, if you talk to the priest beforehand, maybe he'll let you. There's other places besides. So the idea behind this is, listen, i got to have the Holy Spirit teach me. Amen? Did you know you can have communion by yourself at home? <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. It's you and the Holy Spirit. And you're having what? Fellowship. See, thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 15. Thank you, Lord. How many are learning something? Because as we start to realize more and more how valuable the Holy Spirit is, we want to operate with him. Amen. Chapter 15, verse 6. In the Bible, speaking here, and Jesus speaking, In honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your what? Tradition. And people do that. The tradition of men nullify God's word. It prevents people from hearing from God. I mean, that's why you want to know the Lord so you can hear him. You cannot trust man. Example. Tongues are of the devil. How I many you know that that's a tradition? That's not true. Oh, that passed away. That's not true. But people will get you to think that's a truth, so if anything comes up, boy, that's of the devil, and I'm running. And you see how you can get mixed up and you get spoiled. Say amen. amen. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And... We've got to have the Holy Spirit teach us. Praise God. And when the Spirit of the Lord starts revealing truth to you, man, is it exciting. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1, verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. 
when you stop and think, what is the cross of Christ? And I don't want none affecting. I want it to affect you. I want it to. So what is he talking about? He's talking about man's wisdom can nullify the cross of Christ. Nullify the promises of God and its benefits. And, uh, and, and at this time, there's movies out there and Hollywood does. But do you know there's a lot of people who aren't born again will watch one of those Hollywood movies. The Temptations of Christ. Y'all remember there was a movie out there. I never watched it. And then there's the Da Vinci Code. You know, all, both of those movies nullify the cross power because Jesus sent in with Mary Magdalene. How I many know that's not true? But the devil comes along to make people, oh yeah, so why should I, what is this wrong with And gets people all mixed up and spoils them. Mm -hmm. And makes it difficult. So we don't want to nullify any promises of God and its benefits, do we? Amen. First John chapter 4, all the way to the back. Man, we are moving around here today, aren't we? Thank you, Jesus. In 1 John chapter 4, we're going to talk about there are spirits of error called demons. And the Bible says in verse 1 of chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now you can look at this two ways. You're thinking of people that are false people, false prophets, and saying they're a prophet, and you can see that they're out there, but they're a spirit, aren't they? Aren't you? I've got a spirit. Well, I have a spirit, soul, and body, right? Mm -hmm. So don't believe every spirit, but is it a demonic spirit that's using that person? So you have to look at it that way and not as a person that's mm -hmm. doing You've got to look at the devil as pulling the strings, making the person do what he's doing. All right, because a lot of people, well, just take, for example, there's a lot of people in, in the eastern part of the United States, the world called Iraq and Philistines, killing people for the name of God. I mean, oh, that's not try, try, cor correct. How many can see that? All right. So try the spirits whether they are of God because there are false prophets gone into the world. And that's a spirit that's gone into the world. Hereby I know you the spirit of God. Here's how you understand the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist against the anointing. Whereof you have heard that it should come even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is the only one who's going to talk to you and tell you it's the truth. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So these spirits of error are called demons. The Spirit of God will confess Jesus Christ come in the flesh. Amen. And only He will. Jesus came in the flesh, which holds blood. Amen. And it's the blood that forgives us. And without the body, a body was prepared for Him. We see that in Hebrews chapter 9. A body was prepared for Him. Why? So it could hold blood. That blood needs to be spilled so that blood can be used to forgive us. Okay? That's why it's important that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And the demonic spirit's not going to say that. They're going to deny that. Oh, no, no he was just a prophet. It never happened. And, oh, as soon as you know that, boy, you know that you're talking to a demonic spirit. Even though you're looking at some person and hearing words come out of their mouth, you're not talking to a person, you're talking to a spirit. It's like... A psychologist says, you know, we get these people that are trying to get out of alcoholism. Uh, you know, we're just talking to the alcohol. We're not talking to the person. We're not, we know we're talking to the alcohol. We know we're, see, they know that because they know the person's not there. They're talking to some person. Oh, I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. They know they're talking to the alcohol, not to the person. Mm -hmm. And so you got to realize that as you're smart in the things of God, understanding how the Holy Spirit teaches you how Spirit speaks to you. And how you can identify it. it says right there. Believe not every spirit, but try or test the spirits where they are of God. Okay? Mm -hmm. A person in church prophesying. Okay, Holy Spirit, was that you? Did Jesus Christ come in the flesh out of that person? And he's going, yes, that's me. No. You'll know just like that. I've seen and heard people say words come out of their mouth that has got nothing to do with the things of God and they're also slanted. And you got to realize not everybody in every church is on fire for Jesus like you and I are. 
they're out there to fleece the flock, called wolves in sheep's clothing. So be aware. Say, thank you, Jesus. That's why the Holy Spirit teaches us the truth. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So how many know that tongues are not of the devil? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, let's go over to 1 Timothy. Praise God. We're getting to the T's. Everybody knows all the T's are together. Thessalonians, Timothy's, Titus. We're going to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> now the Spirit, verse 1, speaketh expressly. So we know it's the Holy Spirit talking expressly. Would you say, hey, I got your attention now. I'm speaking expressly. He's speaking to you in a way that you got, hey, his voice inflection's changed. Hey, listen up. He's speaking expressly. Are you getting this? Because a lot of times we just read it. Oh, okay. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Do you all realize we're living in the latter times? Yeah. And some shall depart from the faith. How many people do you know that get saved and walk away from the Lord? Some depart from the faith. Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Whoa. That's harsh. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. So when we pray for our food, we are what? It says right there, we are receiving the food with thanksgiving. Amen. Verse 4 says the same thing. So, Seducing spirits are spirits of errors, okay? Not just errors from men or mistake. You must not only believe the resurrection, but you must know the truth of it. And it's so exciting to me to, to I could go on for a couple hours just on these two scriptures. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared from hot iron. Their conscience could care less. <laughs> I'll smoke if I want to. Give me my beer. Don't tell me I can't have one. It doesn't affect him well, what's going on about because he is seared. And a hot iron, tss, after a while you get a callus, tss, hot iron doesn't bother. It just tss. You can go on ironing your clothes. It doesn't, you know that iron's hot. It doesn't hurt you. It does, it's, it's seared. It doesn't matter. Your conscience is, gets that way. It gets hardened. And there are a lot of people who have hardened, seared consciences. And we know what causes that. They get hurt. And then they put up the roadblocks. And now the devil comes in and grabs a hold of them. And now they're in hard, hard, hard times. He to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that happens in this church. People come to here to hear the word of God. And a demonic spirit comes upon them and they get what we call uh, offended. And then the spirit speaks to them right in church. Why, oh, he can't be doing that. I'm going to leave. And they get up, yeah, I'm going to go. And they, you know, huffy, they got seduced. They got taken away. They didn't hear the identification. Where did the source of that information come from? And we go back to the four sources of wisdom and we teach people how to know what voice is speaking to them. And they're new and they're learning, but they don't understand all things and they get all mixed up. So it's important that they understand what's a doctrine of the devil. And a lot of people don't realize doctrines of devils, but they, they run across them all the time. And then we forbidding to marry. Anybody know any priests? They're not married? Hello? Just in case we have to eat fish on Fridays. For what? <clears throat> Just in case. In case of what? Well, if Jesus showed up, you know, and eat fishes. Where did that information come from? Why are they doing such things? There's more to it. See, the traditions of men make the word of God none effect. Therefore, you don't have any faith. In the, and some depart from it because of this stuff. So, and, you know, abstaining from meats. So, is there a lot of vegetarians around? And they tell you the other one, a lot of vegetarians get cholesterol problems and heart problems just like anybody else. But why? God said all things are to be received with thanksgiving. And people get into this little doctrines and they get into their things. 
It's very important to identify. Ask the Holy Spirit. Can I do this? Yes. No. Whatever he says, do it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, you got to know the truth. And the truth that you know sets you free. Everybody knows that scripture in John, right? And it's the important part about it is, do you really know it? I know the President of the United States, because I see him on TV and we voted for him. How many know what we're talking about? But I don't know the President of the United States like his wife intimately knows him. Intercourse. I need to know the truth with intercourse, not just... Uh, let me give you an example of what I'm trying to show you. I'll just use my son. He comes up, well, it's going to rain. And he says it like he knows. And he says, it isn't going to rain. Yeah, it's going to rain. Well, why do you say it so adamantly? Well, I heard him on TV. I said, the wind blows and it moves clouds. <laughs> See, some people say things as though it's the gospel truth. And because of how they said it, all they're doing is stating their opinion, but it comes across as, that's it. So what's the truth? And only the Holy Spirit will give you the truth. Amen? Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 1. Are you guys having a good time? Because as the Spirit of the Lord shows you things today, you can go home and use it. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 1. Now Galatians chapter 1 and 2 is very powerful scriptures. And it's powerful. Because if you grasp on what God is teaching us in this, you'll want it too. Galatians chapter 1 verse 11. Paul speaking. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Everybody should have that highlighted in your Bible. By the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Jesus taught Paul via the Holy Spirit because he prayed in tongues and interpreted his words and knew. I mean, you all go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and you see the, the, the communion. And Paul says, and the night that Jesus was betrayed, took bread. He wasn't there. How did he know what was going on? Because he got it by revelation knowledge. Verse 13, For you have heard of my conversation, or my, life, my lifestyle, in times past, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above my equals in my own nation. Oh, wow. Being more, being, what was that? Being more, Exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. Man, those are powerful words. They should have that highlight. To reveal. Here we got revelation. Now we have revealing. Those words should go bells and whistles, pop in your spirit. What is being revealed? You know? To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Oh, can you give me a, 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 a what's it, confirmation on this? I want to know that I really heard, well, who are you? Hey, God talked to you. You got it from him firsthand. So you better know his voice. And everybody said, well, I put my fleece out. Say, I hate fleeces to pieces because it's not trusting God. You can go out and say, well, God, well, the next red, three red Volkswagens to pass by, the older style, the 1970 models, three red ones to drive by, I know it's you. And the devil will bring three of them right by you. Then I'll go to Africa. How many know you got to hear from God yourself? Say amen. amen. Not three Volkswagens that come by. Not because, oh, I prayed for a new car and I got me a bicycle. I am so praised God gave me what I asked for. No, you didn't get a car. I prayed for hundred dollars and I got five bucks. God didn't give it to you. You gotta, you gotta see when you ask for something, you're gonna get what you ask for. How many are gonna plant tomatoes and corn comes up? <laughs> Why? How many know that's not how it works? Say thank you, Jesus. So you gotta know the truth. Amen. So, what does the Holy Spirit teach? 
I just read you some scriptures. Okay? Paul received from Jesus Christ, not man. The Holy Spirit is the revelator of knowledge. He reveals knowledge. Here you go. He is the key to teaching of Christ in me. Okay? I'm gonna, I, I do this to everybody. I'm going to do it now. There's no difference between me and you and anybody else. Amen. Let's go to Colossians. Praise the Lord. So, we're going to talk about this verse. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentile, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I read that so nice, and I, and I know you missed all the revelator words. But we'll go over it. Say, thank you, Jesus. All right. The scripture is the real foundation of our faith. Those scriptures are the foundation of our faith. Oh, it is? Yeah, to reveal Christ in you. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. Those of you watching this videotape, those in here, you don't have to answer me out loud. But you put it in your heart and you go, wow. So, you said, Jesus, come into my heart, live in, my, live in me. And he goes, okay. So, have you ever asked him, what are you doing in there? And you're in there, now what? Huh? There's something that he has to do in there, right? Now, let's, let's let you read the scriptures with me one more time. Verse 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from the generation. Now, we know that God hid Jesus, right? Nobody knew he's coming. That was one God, right? We didn't know it was three. <laughs> Come on. You all with me, right? You read your Bible. Okay. To fulfill the word of God. Verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages. So we know that Jesus was a mystery. He was hidden. Nobody knew it. Come on. It was brought about in the scriptures, a little here, a little there. And those, those that were wise figured it out. Listen to this. But now is made manifest to his saints. Manifest. Reveal. Woo! What's going on on the inside? What is being manifested to you? Made. Manifest to his saints. What is it being revealed what is it that this mystery has been hid? What is being made manifest now right to me? Well, I have Jesus in me. Hmm. Is he opening and showing himself to you? Uh, no, I've been, I've been walking with the Lord for a lot of years and I just really don't know why I'm here. I don't know what my plan and my purpose is. Hello in there, Jesus. What do you think's going on now? I know you've been in there a few days. And there are some people, you know, they got Jesus and they smoke cigarettes but smoke all over him and drink booze and they got booze all over him. He's in there, right? You know, I'm just saying that. But you can stop and think about it. All right? Verse 27 comes. Now God's supposed to manifest to the saints. And when? Now, to whom God would make known. How does God make you to know something? And I'm going to show you right now. You ready for this? You've all been made to show you something from the time you went to school. You had to go to school. You were made to know your arithmetic, your reading, and your writing. Right? You were made. How did you get them to be made? You can't tell me I have to have homework and I have to bring in. You've got to get good grades. Okay, I'm going to have good grades. I'm going to make you to know this. How? This is how you are going to learn your math. You're going to write it down. You're going to subtract. You're going to add. You're going to multiply. You're going to get on the blackboard and you're going to learn to write these words. And you're going to memorize them and we're going to have a test on it. You were made to know that. Isn't that right? Everybody says yes. How does God make you know that Christ is in you? Wow. And I'm telling you something, the more you dig into this, to reveal Christ in me. What's he doing in there? I need the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what the plan and purpose of Jesus living in my heart is for the rest of my life so I can engage with Jesus and accomplish. 
to, make, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery? What is the riches of this mystery? What is so exciting? What is so rich? What is so glorious? That's in me. His name is Jesus, but I don't know it yet. Did you know it the moment you got born again? Did you know it a year later? Did you know it ten years later? Do you know it now? What is the glory of that mystery that's been in you and the only way that's going to happen is for the Holy Spirit to come and give you the revelation knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ being alive in you. Say amen. Because that is the basis of our faith, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say thank you, Jesus. The revelation of Christ in you. How do I get revealed knowledge? Now this is something I didn't learn from somebody reading the Bible because even then it was tough. I've got to have the Holy Spirit show me. And I told you the dream I had. Jesus getting whipped, and he's doing that for you all night long. He's pointing to the Holy Spirit. He was revealing something. What was he revealing? That he was taking on his back stripes for me. For me. Nobody else. Just me. I'm the only one there doing it for me. What was he revealing to me? It was in a dream, wasn't it? Yeah, we all get dreams. I don't think I'll be doing a teaching on dreams. Praise the Lord. So here we go. Once you realize, hey, i got to understand what's in this to me. All right, let's go back over to 1 Corinthians yes, chapter 3. Praise God, we're getting it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 3, verse 11. Amen. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. What did he lay? What was his foundation? What did Jesus' foundations, what are they? He laid them down. What are they? Interesting statement, isn't it? Okay, let's go back over to Ephesians 20. Excuse me, Ephesians 2, verse 20. And you see these two verses come together and you go, Wow, thank you, Jesus. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. All the way to 22. In whom all the buildings fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. The revelation of Christ in you. That's what we're talking about. This is the primary, number one, the primary revelation of the Holy Spirit that is brought to you after you receive Jesus Christ. What's that foundation? Of Him building a holy tabernacle together, building you up till you can be totally just like His Son, Jesus. Whew, powerful. Oh, I'm not ready yet. No, I don't feel like doing that. I want to sleep in. I don't want to go. None of your bodies ever talk to you like that does all the time. And you've got to say, forget that, man. Jesus is hot for me, and I'm hot for him. I'm going to church because i got to hear what the Holy Spirit's going to teach me. Say, thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 16. Don't worry, i got another page. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord. We're almost done. I'm here learning something. Thank you, Jesus. Exciting, isn't it? Verse 15. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Say, Amen. Amen. So Peter had a revelation from heaven. Everybody says, yes. yes. Revelation means to unveil. It comes off. To take the cover off. Amen. The Holy Spirit will stop the efforts of the enemy to deceive you. Isn't that amazing? How? By revelation. The Holy Spirit gives you something that you didn't know anything about. He reveals it to you. He didn't tell it out loud. He speaks it to your heart. 
and puts it in a dream. It's quiet. And nobody's hearing it but you, not the devil. <gasps> Whoa! Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's how he stops the efforts of the enemy to deceive you. Isn't that good news? Why? Do you think you want to get baptized with the Holy Ghost now? Yeah! Thank you, Jesus. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. We got two more scriptures. And we'll be finished with this chapter 3. This is good stuff. How many are having fun here? I'm going to read to you a scripture and then I'm going to tell you what it means. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I, exactly what I prayed the Lord to do when I was younger. I said, Lord, I want to know what these scriptures' references are, where they're located, and what they mean, and to be able to explain it. And here I am doing it. Thank you, Jesus. I prophesied to myself and it's coming true. Thank you, Lord. Because the Holy Spirit took what I said and, dropped, and brought me over here. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding, I'm laughing because I got a, such an answer from the Holy Ghost. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Isn't it great? Did y'all get the revelation? I hear them saying, yes, Lord, we got it. Praise God. We have no need for any man to teach me, but the Holy Spirit's teaching me. Do you remember what I said to you in Colossians chapter 1? I mean, it's chapter 3, I guess. Do you remember what I said over there about that the Holy Spirit says we, it's being made manifest to us now? And remember that? Remember me talking about that? Yep. Let me just, chapter 1. Yeah, I was right. Uh, it says, Even the mystery which has been hid from all ages, and now is made manifest to the saints, to whom God would make known what is the what? Richest of the glory of this mystery among you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Would you like to hear the answer? Would you all like to hear the answer? Amen. Yeah. All right. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his in the saints. There's your answer. God's still going to make it, make it known to you. How? Through the Holy Spirit. By giving you wisdom and understanding and revelation of the knowledge of him. Say, praise God. So this statement, revelation in the knowledge of him, means the revelation of Jesus in you and the power of the Holy Spirit teaching you. Otherwise, you're open to all forms of bad teaching. Mm -hmm. And have you ever sat down and said, God, make me to know. I want to know what is his hope of his calling in me. What is the Lord Jesus Christ, the hope of him in me, Christ in me? Will you reveal him? Open the eyes of my understanding that I would be enlightened, that I would understand what I would know. Man, you need the Holy Ghost, don't you? And as you start saying, I need what this says. Otherwise, I don't know. Haven't you ever wondered? Yes, we all have. And here it's been here all this time. And the Holy Spirit was showing us all the time. But we never put a demand. Now, a good electrician understands when there's a demand on the electricity, it's going to flow. When that switch is open, it's moving. And the Holy Spirit switches open and you just need to say, I'm the light bulb, illuminate me, enlighten me, mm, pull it in. Now, a good, a good student always sits on the edge of their chair. Come on, 
Feed me some more. Come on, I'm right here. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come me some more. That's a good student. So when you pray and you ask the Holy Spirit, you better be ready. Because you're going to be a good student, right? You're going to get, okay, Holy Spirit. Okay, I got it. Now, how do I do this? Okay, you say do it like this. Okay. Now, what's my next? Yes. Okay, I need to practice. All right, let me do that first. Okay, now I got that. And you'll just be built up quickly. Amen. 1 John chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Last scripture. Praise God. 1 John chapter 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. Woohoo! And you need not any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth. And there's no lie, even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. That scripture makes more sense to you now than it did when I first read it. Because you, oh, I just got some revelation. Yes, the eyes of my understanding, they got enlightened. Thank you, Jesus. It was the Holy Ghost teaching me. Say, thank you, Jesus. So only the Holy Spirit, called the anointing, can teach you all things. Man can give you knowledge, but it takes the Holy Spirit to teach you. Amen? Amen. You go to school, which is good because you get knowledge, you have it, but man, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and shows you how it works, it's like, yes, you got it. And I've got news for you. When you know the Lord speaks to you, you don't ever forget what He says. It's there. Why? Because he makes it known to you. Say, thank you, Lord. How many got something out of this? Well, let's put a prayer on this and we'll end it. We just thank the Lord. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this awesome time with the Holy Spirit and understanding him as our teacher. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us revelation knowledge. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to have an understanding of who Christ is in me, the hope of glory. And all the people of God said, Amen, amen and Amen.